Welcome you lovely people of Earth and planets beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh and today I'm going to tell you a story about how I found $30,000 worth of starter and other vintage sportswear gear in the middle of nowhere. Let's get into it. So the story goes a little bit like this. In 2018, my wife and I were part-time resellers and we were really focusing in on vintage clothing, um, specifically Levi's and some older brands like that. And I have a friend who also likes to thrift. His name is Joey. And he's out and about thrifting here and there, places that I don't know because he grew up here. And he uh, will occasionally find something that I'm interested in. He'll buy it. I'll pay him a little bit of finder's fee. And uh, it helps me. He does it. He has fun, makes a little bit of money. Well, one day he sends me a photo of a starter jacket, something like this probably. And uh, I was like, oh yeah, I don't totally want to buy that. And he's like, yeah, it's like three bucks or so. So he picks it up and brings it to me at church. Uh, and I'm like, okay, cool. Here's the money, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, hey, there's a bunch more if you want it. And I'm like, oh, totally, really, I'm really interested. But I'd never heard of this thrift store. I'd never been there in my life. But it was a thrift store that apparently was really awesome. So a few days later, we negotiated a time to sort of meet up and he was gonna take me over to this thrift store. And so we head off to this thrift store, which is about 45 minutes away from my house. And it really is, my house is like the middle of nowhere, but this was like even further than the middle of nowhere. Uh, so uh, we get there. And we walk in, and it's actually a pretty large thrift store, surprisingly large for the area. Lots of stuff. And I start looking around, and I just cannot believe my eyes. It was, it was unreal. It didn't make any sense. It felt so out of place in the middle of the woods. But every rack I turned to, there was more and more vintage starter, vintage champion, logo athletic, logo seven, Adidas, Nike all kinds of stuff, dead stock, mostly, like 90% dead stock, and it was everywhere. You can see the reaction on my face and how like shocked I am here in this video that I recorded on my phone a few years ago. <clears throat> all right, we are popping off here. My boy Joey hooked it up with, hold on, with the most insane amount of vintage sports heat I've ever seen. I'm about to spend so much money because this is what collecting this stuff is all about. I mean, bulls, devil rays, can everything. I, I buy this? <clears throat> Freaking crazy. You can, uh, hold on. Daddy may not have any more money after today. Um, oh, I know. Put that one in. Sorry. Sorry, I keep missing it. Get that one too. Um, and that one. And the Bucks one. Oh my God, dude. And the other Bucks one. And there's that EMC one. <clears throat> yeah, we'll hold on to that. All right, so, well, I've got to go get more money. Um, I'm going to have this boy help me out here and we're going to sort some stuff and I'm going to hopefully come back with enough money to buy all of this, but no promises. So, we'll see. So at this point, I was super excited uh, I had a few hundred bucks available just to go ahead and buy things. So I bought about a hundred items at around three dollars a piece. I uh, focused on the items that were like uh, probably the, the, the best items out there. You can see some of the items in the video. And of course I took that back and I was like there were still tons of stuff there left over. So I knew after uh, I could get back home get some more cash in hand, I needed to go back. So about a week later, uh, maybe a little bit less than a week later, I go over there with like, I think it was like $600. And I'm just piling up more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. And the manager goes, hey, uh, I noticed you're buying all this stuff. Um, would you like to see more of it? And I'm like, wait, there's more? There's more than all the stuff that was like all over the store? And he's like, yeah, yeah, come on to the back. And we go to the back and I, regret not filming this uh, because it was like <laughs> it was crazy I felt like I was like on the factory floor at starter or something but I walked to the back and there's just this huge rack that has like two two levels and it's just like wall-to-wall -wall jackets wall-to-wall -wall jackets and then there's boxes on the left and there's boxes full of jerseys and shirts and more jackets in fact it was a whole box of vintage starter and logo athletic and I think logo seven uh, 
Houston Oilers gear, like dead stock, new with tags. Um, and I, so I knew I had to grab that. So I, I only had $600 and I was like, hey, look, if we, if I buy a bunch of stuff, could we negotiate a, you know, a better price? So we negotiated a price. I think when it came down to it, I paid like $3 um, because I think the jackets were like $5 and jerseys were two dollars and then like light jackets like this were three dollars so i think all in all i spent i averaged around three dollars a piece and got you know 200 or so items that day so that puts my total at about 300 items um you can see the video of me sort of trying to pack the car all right we are almost done oh sorry camera's all messed up we are packing this full there are jerseys and all kinds of jerseys, jackets, polos, championship team gear, all sorts of stuff. Friggin' unreal buy. I'm just like stuffing the car full as I possibly can. <clears throat> Every nook and crevice. I mean, there's Elway jerseys in here with tags from the 90s and let's so everything so uh yeah i'm gonna haul this away get into the warehouse and then we will uh go through some of it so we got it all back to our warehouse and we began to start processing it i'll show you a video here of me sort of going through a handful of the items so you can get a better idea of what we actually found this is it this is the pile stuff Got stuff stacked up under there too, and there, all over here. And then I started racking things all through here, down into here. So let's take a look at a couple of pieces that we got that we're sitting on here. We got some uh, wild cats, starter pieces. This is an old Bengals piece right here. This is pretty sick. Bengals piece. Uh, this is a. Uh, San Francisco's with Young on the back, embroidered. Dang, uh, this is absolutely, whoops. This is absolutely sick. This is sick if you're a Kansas fan. This uh, Logo 7 Kansas University. Let's go to the front here. We got the Orlando Magic. Whoa, that's falling out. Orlando Magic, we got the LA Lakers. We got the, uh, let's see, I think it's the Bulls. Uh, we got the Bulls. More Bulls stuff, more Bulls there. Got some Yankees, Adidas, Yankees stuff. We got four time NBA champs, Chicago Bulls. We got some LA Rams, LA Rams stuff, that's sick. Uh, we got this Miami, Miami Dolphins? Dolphins, yeah, Miami Dolphins, I believe. It's the Timberwolves, Minnesota Timberwolves. More Lakers, uh, Chicago Bears, this is a sick piece, New York Knicks, pro player, two-tone, Milwaukee Bucks pullover, more Bucks, more Bucks, Milwaukee Bucks, Denver Nuggets pullover, the Miami Dolphins, more Dolphins, Rockets, uh, Reebok Rockets, we got the Texas Rangers, Atlanta Braves, Oakland Athletics, hold on, Tampa Bay, the, the Devil Rays, uh, we got the Charlotte Hornet pullover, or I know that's not that's a zip up, uh, Denver Broncos, Philadelphia Eagles, San Francisco's, San Francisco 49ers, Satin Bomber Jacket, Chiefs zip up, Devil Rays again, we got that. Michigan University, Apex One, a jacket, old school Philadelphia logo, old school Philadelphia logo, Eagles, big time, Steelers, starter, 49ers, old, old deal. Oh, what else we got? Buffalo Bills. Now we got them Oakland Raiders. Uh, zip up for the Oakland Raiders satin bomber jacket. This is a huge piece if you know anything about uh, this type of stuff. This was worn by like NWA and those guys back in the day. Big deal. Got some Houston Oilers, old school. Indiana Pacers, Pacers, Oilers. 
This is sick. I'm gonna pull this out because it's so dope. We got that uh, Boston Celtics number 33. You know who that is? The Larry Bird starter. This is freaking sick jacket. This thing's gonna go for a pretty penny, I'm sure. Um, uh, this is that is the Atlanta Falcons, more Steelers, another Michigan satin jacket, uh, Phoenix Suns, Washington Redskins, the San Diego Chargers, more Oilers jackets, big old heavy duty old school jackets, the starter jackets. Uh, looks like we got a Dolphins pullover, um, another satin jacket. This is a Kansas City Chiefs satin jacket. It's gonna be hot this year, I'm sure, because they're doing so well. Uh, jerseys. Uh, this is a, what is that? Grabag, I don't, or Grabac, Grabac, I don't know. How do you, how do you even spell that? G-R-B-A, I don't know what's going on here, but it's just all over the place. So after those first two trips, I would go back, I think, basically every week and whatever money I had extra, I would buy a little bit more until it was basically all gone. I bought just about everything. There were a handful of things that were maybe damaged or uh, that were dirty that weren't worth me buying or they weren't particularly interesting and then we would have an interest in buying from me. So we left some of that stuff there. But we did bring back, I mean, these are actually some of the items here that we bought. This was a, I can't remember, is it Adam Smith? I can't remember. Uh, but this is a, this is a like a sewn jersey. It's dead stock. Um, we actually have two of these, and I accidentally, I just found out last week that we actually hadn't listed them in the first place. They had been sitting in, in uh, the inventory for a while. And a couple other of these jerseys here, uh, but just tons and tons of dead stock stuff. And uh, those Oilers jackets were like the best. I think we sold each of the bigger jackets, the puffer coats, for like 250 or more. Um, and some of the smaller stuff between like 75 and 150. Uh, so right there we made back just about all the money we spent. I think in all in total, we spent somewhere around a thousand and thirteen fifty, something like that. And uh, when we got back to the totals, uh, I, there was hundreds and hundreds of items. Um, when we looked back at our records uh, over the next year after selling, is you know about ninety percent of it we sold that stuff for about thirty thousand dollars, which puts my profit in the you know thousands, tens of thousands of dollar range. Um, so pretty incredible. I was super thrilled. It was an unbelievable moment. Uh, this is, I've, it's happened, and actually, ironically, this is what was crazy. Earlier that year, I had stumbled upon a garage sale where a lady was selling off all of this, uh, I think mostly fairly close to vintage, uh, dead stock, uh, Polo Ralph Lauren and ba uh, Bally and a bunch of other like really high-end brands. Um, she says she bought them from a liquidation pallet, you know, 15 years ago, and it sat in storage. And I basically bought all of that. So that year, 2018, was unbelievable in terms of big giant buys. Uh, those are harder and harder to come by around here because I guess nobody had really gotten to them until I got to them, and now they're sort of drying up. But all in all, such an unbelievable experience. Um, I cannot believe that I got my hands on so much of it. Um, it's super cool. Uh, won't happen probably very often, but uh, just goes to show you have to be out there and look. Even if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you never know what else you can find. Now, why were any of these items there in the first place? Well, I asked the manager and he said he, they'd actually been there since before he started managing the little thrift store. But the story goes that a businessman from Chicago retired down to that area, brought all this stuff with him. He either owned a shop or bought liquidation of a shop, and he just put it in his storage locker. And sadly, he passed away a few years later, and the family just took all that stuff and donated to that little local thrift store. So uh, they had it for a while, sold some of it. Who knows what amazing things they sold that I didn't get my hands-on uh, at the time that I bought everything but I did get most of it so I'm certainly plenty happy and uh, pray it happens again uh, unlikely I suppose but definitely one of the coolest stories that I have had thrifting in my entire life so that is the story I hope you enjoyed it I hope it inspired you to go look even in the places you don't expect to find anything interesting or cool uh, get out there look for awesome sourcing opportunities you never know what you're gonna find 
and it might just, you know, change your life just a little. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you like content like this about vintage clothing and thrifting. We make tons of it. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.